welcome to a new installment here on Stories of Lore. I'm going to start producing top five videos where I talk about the top five haunted locations, cursed objects, cryptids, and so much more. So, here on the first video for Stories of Lore Top Fives, we're going to be talking about the top five cursed objects. Hey everyone, and welcome back. Now when most of us think about curses, we tend to think more towards magic and rituals, meaning that we blame the practices of witchcraft and voodoo. However, sometimes that is not the case. Sometimes, when strong emotional feelings are poured into one object or area, they could in fact become cursed or imprinted by that energy. Also, other forces that we may not understand, like spirits or demons, may have a hand in these cursed objects. Now, let us count down these infamous cursed objects. The idea of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh's tomb that has been unsealed releasing a horrible ancient curse is nothing new. It has been the subject of numerous movies, stories, and books, but in this case, the curse is all too real. The great pharaoh Tutankhamun, or more commonly known as King Tut, was the pharaoh of ancient Egypt during the 18th dynasty. He took the throne when he was around the age of 9 or 10. One of the more well-known actions he performed as Pharaoh was ending the worship of the god Aten and reinstating the worship of the god Amun, making him the superior god once more. Tutankhamun's reign only lasted 10 years, meaning that he died at the age of 19. Some blame this on an accident due to maybe war or an accident. Others say that he was assassinated. And maybe, if he was, this is what fueled the curse of King Tut's tomb. Tutankhamun and his tomb were found in the Valley of the Kings and was opened on November 29, 1922 by Howard Carter. After the tomb was opened, the rumors of a curse followed shortly behind. Lord Carnarvon, the financial backer of the excavation, died from blood poisoning after his mosquito bite became infected. His brother-in-law, Aubrey Herbert, also died of blood poisoning. Sir Archibald Douglas Ray, who x-rayed the tomb, died from a mysterious illness. A.C. Mace, a member of the excavation, died due to arsenic poisoning. Howard Carter himself died 10 years later after the tomb was opened. Some blame the curse on his death, as well as the people that were mentioned before, and others. So, is there a curse? Should the tomb have remained sealed? Some believe the answer is yes to both of those questions. And when you have numerous deaths associated with a location or a specific item, one can only wonder. When we think of cursed objects, we think of things like voodoo dolls and ancient medallions. But sometimes those cursed objects could be something as simple as we wear on Halloween. The Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand and they make masks like these here. These are warrior masks and they wear them into battle. It is said that if a man dies in battle while wearing his mask, his spirit enters the mask and will remain there till the end of time. These newly inhabited masks are not dangerous to men. However, if a woman who is either pregnant or menstruating, comes into contact or even near one of these masks that is believed to have a spirit inside of it, harm or even death may befall that woman and or her baby. 
Some museums that have these masks on display even have a sign next to it warning women who are pregnant not to touch or come into contact with the masks. Is this museum just playing to the superstition? Or do they actually believe in the curse of the Maori warrior masks? Picture of the Busby stoop chair, and it has a fatal curse on it. Thomas Busby, and he was a murderer during the early 1700s. In 1702, he was charged and convicted with the of his father-in-law, Daniel Audi. Daniel Audi had stopped by to retrieve his daughter Elizabeth from Thomas, who he believed was an unfit husband. But when Thomas came home, he was maddened with this news. Depending on who you talk to, he either strangled him or he beat him to death with a hammer. He was tried for this murder and sentenced to be hung by the neck until he was dead. On his way to the gallows, the story goes, he asked to stop by his favorite bar. When he walked inside, he cursed his favorite chair, saying whoever sits in this chair will die. He then was hung shortly after. During World War II, soldiers made this a popular place to hang out, and they thought that the curse of the Busby stoop chair was something to be laughed about, and it simply wasn't real. They took turns sitting in it and mocking the curse, and this was all in fun and games until these soldiers reportedly never returned from war. Now, some may say that this is a coincidence. That is, until the chair claimed more victims. It is also said that two bricklayers who stopped in the bar on their break sat in the chair. They later fell at their work site to their deaths. It became such a problem the, that the owner took the chair and placed it in the basement in hopes that no one else would sit in the chair and die. That is until a delivery man stopped in and sat in the chair to rest for only a few moments. He later died in a car accident delivering more packages. After this, the owner donated it to a local museum where they put it on display by nailing it five feet off the floor, ensuring that no one would ever sit in it again. This begs the question once more, did the museum believe in the curse just as the owner did? And can this amount of energy put into a normal everyday object cause something that we would consider a curse? Everyone knows the story of the infamous Annabelle doll, but do they know the whole backstory? The doll was given to a daughter by her mother, who later brought the doll to her apartment where she lived with her two friends. At first, nothing happened, but over time, they started noticing strange occurrences happening around the doll. First, it started off that the doll seemed to be in different places from where they first left it. And over time, these occurrences became worse and more fatal. It was reportedly able to move on its own from room to room at its leisure. It would write and draw things on the wall and leave notes for all the friends. It then developed a hatred for one of the friends, attacking him on one occasion. It became so bad that the friends contacted the only people that they knew could help them and believe their stories, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren were the top paranormal researchers and investigators of their day, traveling the world lecturing and investigating the things we cannot normally explain. When they found the doll, they concluded that it was possessed by a demon and was no longer safe in the owner's hands. So they took it with them Put it in their occult museum where it sits to this day behind a glass encasing as a warning on it that warns everyone not to touch or even speak to the doll we are still keeping the doll theme and like annabelle 
There is another doll that deserves the title of infamy, and that is Robert the Doll. Origins of this doll is unknown, but some believe that voodoo was involved in the making. A boy, Eugene, that owned Robert, used to blame things on the doll during his childhood, pointing at the doll, saying, Robert did it, it wasn't me. The boy had and owned the doll through the rest of his life until he died. He actually went on to become a celebrated artist. After Eugene died, the people that moved into his house started hearing footsteps, giggling, and things moving around in the attic. So, naturally, they went up to investigate. And they found Robert. They said that they had an eerie feeling when they stared at him, and they actually reported seeing his demeanor change right before their eyes to a look of disdain. Later on, when a woman moved into the house, she loved the doll and actually took it with her to her next home. But after reporting many paranormal occurrences and saying that the doll was haunted, she donated it to a local museum. She died a few months later. In the museum, Robert still sits to this day in a glass encasing much like Annabelle's. He also has a warning saying that you must approach him and speak to him in a kind manner. And if you are going to ask him a question or ask anything, you must ask permission first. It is believed that if you speak to him in a foul manner or even make fun of him, death will befall you. And you thought dolls were creepy before. So now we know that sometimes a curse may not be caused by a spell or a voodoo chant. Sometimes it can be caused by strong emotional energy being poured into an item. Other times, it could be caused by an evil spirit or even a demon. And there are still times where it could be caused by something that is beyond our understanding. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the video today. I thought that it would be a great idea to have a new installment on Stories of Lore. That way I can get that much more videos out to you guys. So please, if this is the first time that you've been viewing this channel, go down there and hit subscribe for future videos and updates. Because that helps me out so much. That gets the video out to so many other people. If you're a returning viewer of Stories of Lore and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, this is the perfect opportunity to do so. Because, like I said, a lot of work goes into these videos. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and hard work put into these episodes. So the subscriptions, the likes, and the shares help us out so much by getting the videos out there to those who may not know too much about the paranormal and want to learn more. So, hit like, hit share, hit subscribe. Also, find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter, find me on Instagram, and all of those other social media sites so you can interact with the cast and crew of Stories of Lore more than you can just on YouTube. I'm Justin Sisk, and I'll see you guys next time.